Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we're going to look at the bright stars of the constellation known as Orion. So we are going to look at these seven main stars in detail and learn about the star's characteristics. But if you want to learn more about how to find this constellation in the sky and how it points to many other constellations, I have a whole detailed video about that. So be sure to go see that video. But in this video, we're really going to focus on the brighter stars within Orion. Right here what we're looking at are the belt stars in detail. So let's get started. If you're new to this channel be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications about all new videos. If you want to learn more about stargazing be sure to visit my new website. We've got some freebies there as well as new seasonal classes that have just been released. The first star I want to take a look at is called Betelgeuse, and keep in mind that there's many pronunciations of this star, and I'm also often challenged by this in the comment section of my channel that I'm pronouncing it wrong. However, I've worked with other astronomers and other educators that have pronounced it as Betelgeuse. However, I've also heard it pronounced Betelgeuse as well as Betelgeuse. I kind of feel like people say Betelgeuse because of that movie with Michael Keaton in the 90s, but uh, which is a movie I absolutely love, but um, I will be pronouncing it as Betelgeuse. And this is designated as the alpha star of the constellation, but it's actually the second brightest star of Orion. The brightest is actually Rigel, but Rigel does have the beta designation. and. The reason for that is because in the past, before we had, um, you know, high forms of technology looking at these stars, we would be relying on the human eye to determine which were the brightest stars. And human eyes are a little bit more unreliable as opposed to the instruments we use today to look at stars. But Betelgeuse is a red supergiant star, and it's estimated to be 624 light years away. And it's a semi-regular variable star. So what does that even mean? It means that this star can change its brightness over the course of time. The name Betelgeuse is the Arabic name meaning armpit of Orion. That's a <laughs> an interesting way to to name a star. But I've also heard that it's um, or read that it is named after the hand of Orion. What's interesting about this star is that it's a potential supernova candidate that could be visible from Earth. So in 2019 into 2020, what we were seeing is that the brightness of this star was changing. So here you can see the usual magnitude of this orange type star and that's the way to to identify it as well is that the, almost all the main stars of Orion are blue except this one but what happened is that the brightness of this star was unusual it started to dim and I definitely noticed it especially after I've been viewing Orion through all these years and scientists have some idea as to why this was at first they were thinking oh this is gonna become a supernova uh, which would have been awesome because we could have seen it from our from from Earth and that's not something that's usual where we can actually see a supernova without magnification but if we take a look at this picture here you can see a picture of Betelgeuse in early January of 2019 but in December of 2019 you can see that the brightness of it shifts right here it just seems a little bit more dim as compared to this particular picture and also notice the shape it's not perfectly spherical so scientists are still examining this star to understand why its brightness changes over time the next bright star that we're going to take a look at is called Rigel, and this is a blue supergiant star that's estimated to be 864.2 light years away. Rigel is actually a quadruple star system, and the name Rigel is an Arabic name meaning foot. Most of the star names are derived from Arabic names. And what's interesting about a Rig Rigel is that it is in fact the brightest star of this constellation, even though it's designated as the beta star. It is expected that this star will become a supernova in its lifetime and 
eventually become a black hole or perhaps a neutron star. Our next star right here is known as Bellatrix. And the name Bellatrix is an Arabic name for female warrior, which if anyone here is a Harry Potter fan, I definitely am. I'm kind of obsessed with those books. You know that one of the characters in there is Bellatrix. And you can see why uh, J. Kate Rowling would name her that because she is a really fierce character. Bellatrix is estimated to be 245 light years away, and it's marked as the 27th brightest star in the night sky. However, it's it's estimated that it it is too small to really become a supernova and its luminosity comes from the fact that it has a really high temperature as opposed to being really big and it is marked as orion's left shoulder if we were to do a comparison of our own sun with bellatrix here you can see this is our sun this is Algol. I've got a whole video about that star, so if you want to learn more about it, go see that video. And then this is Bellatrix. So you can see it's blue in color and it's larger in size to our own sun. The next star we're going to take a look at is known as Safe, and this is a blue giant star that's estimated to be 650 light years away. Its name, Safe, is an Arabic name meaning Sword of the Giant, and it's destined to become a supernova. So at this point, it has exhausted its supply of hydrogen, and it's, it's no longer considered to be a main sequence star. It also has the mass that's 28 times that of our own sun, and it's estimated to be an age of 6.2 million years. Another star we're gonna take a look at is this one right here. And even though it's not a part of the seven main brighter stars, I thought it was worth taking a look at. And Mesa is a blue giant star that's estimated to be 1,100 light years away. And it's actually a binary system. Its name Mesa is an Arabic name meaning the shining one. And if we were to zoom in in this particular region, it is estimated to be a possible supernova remnant. So it's kind of surrounded by this area of nebulosity. It's about 12 degrees across, and this is thought to be the remains of a supernova remnant. Now, this is not something you would necessarily see with the naked eye. This picture was taken over a long period of time, which allows the gases to shine through on the photograph. In the final portion of this video, we're going to take a look at the belt stars of Orion, which in and of itself is an asterism that can be used to point to other constellations. So if you were to draw a line in this direction through the belt stars, it'll point you to Canis Major, which is Orion's great hunting dog. And I have a whole video on that constellation. So if you want to learn more, click on that link below. And then if you draw a line in this direction, it'll lead you to Taurus. I've got a really detailed video about Taurus because it's one of my favorite constellations so be sure to go see that video but now let's go over the names we have al Natak right here al Nilam right here and Mintaka and all these are Arabic names in fact most of the name the common names of the stars are derived from the Arabic language now al Natak is an Arabic word meaning the girdle and it's estimated to be 800 light years away and right near the star which I'll show you in a little bit is the Horsehead Nebula, which is definitely one of my favorites because it really does look like a horse head. So you can see why scientists named it or name nebulas after what they resemble. Next, we have Anilam, and this is an Arabic term meaning string of pearls. And this star is estimated to be 1,342 light years away. And then right here is Mentaka. This is an Arabic name meaning belt, and it's estimated to be 960 light years away. So if we were to zoom in on this region, we get this fascinating picture, which I just love because I feel like I'm always finding different things in it the more I look at it. But if we were to point out the belt stars, here is where it's located. We have Alnitak right here. 
We have Al Nalam and Mintaka, but there's some other interesting things going on as well. Below Al Natak is Sigma Orionis, and this is the star that's helping to illuminate the Horse Head Nebula. So if you want to see the Horse Head Nebula, it's something you would definitely need magnification to see, but it's such a beautiful object. So if you have the opportunity to ever see it through a telescope, I encourage you to do so. Something else I just noticed is that there seems to be like a ring. I don't know if you can see this shape of a ring around the middle star here. Um, I just I just kind of notice that as I look at this picture more and if we were to examine the size of these and compare them to our own Sun here we have um, the Sun which is one solar mass and one solar radius so if you look at Al Natak, Al Nalam and Mintaka you can see that all of them are much much larger than our own Sun and since all the talk is of 20 solar masses this one's of 40 solar masses and this one's 20 it is likely that all three of these stars are to become a supernova now when that will happen I'm not really sure but it's just interesting that if you're looking at these three stars one two three that they're all larger than our Sun and they're all expected to become supernovae We've come to the end of our video about the bright stars of Orion, so I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about these seven main stars in detail. What's fascinating to me is that all of these stars are much bigger than the sun, and many of them have the potential to go supernova, which if this ever happens, particularly with this star, it would be amazing to see in our lifetime. Remember, it takes time, patience, and practice to identify the concept constellations. But with Orion, it really is one of those constellations that's the easiest to find and it can be seen all throughout the world. I wish you luck finding all of these stars. Keep going outside and keep looking up.